uh, just uh, expressing the Schrodinger equation in matrix form, which we uh, we we have covered before. Um, so why this meeting is wasted so useless? Why there is a reason to remind this uh, way to express an equation in the uh, matrix form? So this is related to uh, your coming homework, which is uh, due on Wednesday. And uh, we need to um, focus back on the concept of matrix elements because it is used in, in the homework. So uh, if you uh, looked on the homework, it uh, requests to do the same thing as we did by MATLAB, but by pen and paper, which is uh, not the most pleasant thing. And uh, uh, I would understand that if some, some attempts to do homework will be not 100% complete, but uh, we, we all should try because it is a step forward that is needed for, for, for the next material. It's just the, the language. And although we try to use uh, computational tools as often as possible, it is one of the uh, rare examples when one when, when needs to at least to try. So um, the problems like this, uh, in some sense, you, you will be a pioneers. We were not solving problems like this in class. So you will do something completely new. Uh, and uh, I want to prepare you a, a little bit. So in, in some sense, today's meeting is a preparation, is a fundamental in the ground for the whole work, whatever number six, which is due on coming Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, what else? No, I think that that's it. Feel free to stop me. Oh, I will, I will, I will try to ask uh, as frequent as possible if you are following what is uh, what we discuss. But uh, feel free to stop me if uh, I'm getting too quick or too too slow. So Schrodinger uh, equation in, in matrix form. And in some sense, it is the last meeting in this uh, chapter. So on Monday, I hope we will start a uh, new chapter. So it's, it's, it's a transition from a particle in the box to the new chapter. And the homework six will be sort of terminal. Uh, summer, well, I wouldn't call it midterm, it's a little less uh, important, but in some sort it summarizes the uh, chapter three. So this is uh, homework which you may have already done uh, for number six. Uh, if you want to do it completely independently, it, it will be too much uh, changing of lines. So send me an uh, email if you are do, trying to do it, I will uh, assist. And here is this, uh, is this homework. So the Main problem here is to I should focus on. Main problem here is to take a superpositional uh, state, which is slightly different. In uh, when we were doing in class in MATLAB, it was one over square root of uh, two, one over square root of two, and here is i. So it uh, just to make a little element of torsion, make it not, not, not similar to, to what we previous, uh, previously done. Um, the prediction of a future for wave function probability distribution is uh, quite clear for you. you. You did it by hands in class and by MATLAB in, in the homework. But if the request is to find expectation value of position and moment, momentum as function of time, we intuitively know that it will be some 
balance enforcement back. Probably it will be like sine and, and cosine, but what are the amplitudes of these oscillations, right? What will be the center point? Okay, for position, it will be oscillating around the center. For momentum, it will, it will be positive and, and negative, but what are exact uh, limits? And uh, if one tries to do it by pen and paper, this, in order to complete this uh, number three, there are some preliminary steps which deal with uh, finding um, metric elements of, of position and momentum. This problem that uh, you are offered to complete by coming Wednesday, I wouldn't say it's completely childish, but it is not as useful for like pushing forward the world with science. But the skills and tools that you are approaching, uh, that you, you are using to approach it, are completely competitive in uh, many uh, competitive papers that you can uh, eventually do uh, as a complement to your experimental work to, towards your uh, whatever coursework or, or thesis or research and development, we will go in, along the same lines. So it will be the same approach with uh, a little bit more um, flesh to this uh, to these bones. So the goal uh, for myself is to uh, arrive to this equation by the end of the meeting. And um, I was trying to upload the equation to the caricature uh, website. And if I put the equation completely there, it is not readable for, for humans. Yeah, it looks about this way. And uh, and uh, remembering myself uh, on the other side of a barricade, it is uh, uh, how I would interpret anything that is written on the board. So it's some uh, un unreadable uh, text that I, I have to focus and understand. Um, so let's go over the parts of this uh, equation and then uh, the all time today in the class will be invested in uh, getting these details. So, uh, Do you want to say anything? What, what, what do you see? And what, what are your... uh, well, uh, we see like that if we take uh, the derivative of like two constants in time or whatever, uh -huh. will equal to like negative value of uh, an imaginary number over um, Planck's constant that multiplied by the matrix. Uh -huh times another imaginary uh, constant matrix, I guess, over time, I don't know. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely correct. Uh, let's continue the uh, attempt to, of interviews. Nate, if you don't mind uh, giving more comments. So what are the things that uh, Sibyl called constants? Um, what are they? Uh -huh. Just any any suggestions, any impressions? Well, I know it's this is Schrodinger's equation. Uh -huh. And what what are those constants? C one, C two, how would um, and is there any surprise what you would expect to see instead of this constant in I don't. Uh, Schrodinger equation is an equation for, for which object is independent? Um, the position? No, no, no. no. Uh, the, the object that is called with letter psi. The wave function? Yes, wave function. Do we see here wave function? No. So instead, we have, we have the constant. Yep. Right? Yeah. So it is an interesting observation about this equation, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Wyatt, would you like to teach us something or maybe? 
Um, What, 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 what is the connection between this C constants uh, and wave function? If would you would you uh, expect that uh, they are connected by some way, or they are completely independent, irrelated objects? Or oh, they should be connected. Okay, good enough. Adam, uh, what would you like to teach all of us? <laughs> well, they are a function of time. Oh, okay, good. They're a function of time. And we have a derivative of time. So it will be something about predicting future and time evolution. Excellent, excellent. Uh, do you have any idea about connection between the C uh, coefficients and wave function? Um, I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but um, yeah, I, I remember it being included in one of the uh, in integrals. Okay, okay. Uh, any, how would you call them? Uh, like a, a coefficient? Yeah, expansion yeah. coefficient. So by multiplying this expansion coefficient by basis functions, you can get wave function. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, so we didn't chat with Joe. What do we like to add? Um, Matrix in the center. What, what do you do? It's uh, the matrix elements for, uh, shoot, I can't remember. It was in one of the lectures, I know. Um, what, what, what for the, uh, stands for, for the, the Hamiltonian operator, right? Which stands for total energy, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, so I, by arranging uh, brainstorming session of discussing to each other, you can survive without an instructor in this class, right? So you, you basically told everything. So uh, this C coefficients do replace wave function. And uh, we, who was teaching us this? Joshua was telling that Dirac notation unifies together uh, the vectors and wave functions. and we will approach this uh, notation once again uh, today. So the vector of the coefficients, which replaces wave function is on the left and right. And here we look for how this vector is changing over time. And we see that it depends on the value of this coefficients in previous instant of time. And here is the matrix that is related to uh, operator of total energy. And uh, it is interesting that there are like angular brackets and there are different indices here. Like uh, about four times you have index one, here it is, here, there, there, and about four times index two on the left and right. Okay. So it is basically what, what we discussed. Uh, derivative of this vector of coefficients on the left coefficients on the on, on the right and in 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 between we have this this matrix okay so uh and some people do not like this angular brackets and put just uh sub subscripts uh, as, as typically one does for 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 the matrices so I admit it is not possible to read and understand all but I say by, by words. So any uh, who remembers concept of Taylor expansion from your calculus? Okay, more, more or less. So uh, each good function can be expressed as a power series. Power not means that it's something strong, but uh, as a polynomial for like uh, x times plus x square plus x third. And in order to make this series of polynomial functions equal to a, some unknown function, one needs to set different coefficients in front, right? So uh, by putting like c not in front of x to the power not, which will be three coefficients, c1 in front of x1, 
to the power one c2 in front of x2 if one selects coefficients one can match any function uh, uh, most popular example is exponential which is one plus x plus x square over two and, and so forth right so same can be done uh, not only in calculus but in other uh, areas of, of knowledge so wave function is adding together basis functions here they are not necessarily polynomials in our uh, current example, they are eigenstates of particle in the in the box, and this uh, c1, c2 are appropriate coefficients to match the initial condition. Make sense? Okay. So basis set, basis functions, and um, we can tell that since basis functions do not change over time, they found once and forever, wave function is unambiguously represented by set of these coefficients. So if you know the coefficients, it means we know the wave function. And they are replaceable. Instead of one psi continuous function, we can just uh, place a set of, of the expansion coefficients. Uh, okay. And if we are looking into the prediction of the future, if you are looking into dynamics, we know that in majority of the systems, the basis functions do not change, but expansion coefficients may change over time. And the question is how they change over time. So instead of focusing on wave function, we will focus on the expansion coefficients, assuming that they may change over time. So it is the uh, important observation that uh, Adam did. When he glanced on, on the equations, he thought, oh, those C coefficients depend on over time. And it is, in some sense, it is a main point of uh, today's meeting. We look how they change over time. Um, in some sense, our meeting today is, as the whole course is useless, well, I'm exaggerating, but uh, um, there is a little comment in which situations uh, such approach is especially important. When our quantum system is isolated, then all questions about dynamics are legitimate but quite boring it is predictable and uh, it is not as novel but it be everything becomes much more exciting if there is an external perturbation if you remember our space uh, of ideas at the beginning of each class i, I try to draw it maybe quite ugly or one axis is system another is uh, methods and another is external perturbation so if there are external perturbations such as uh, shining light or heating then the total energy operator is not the same as it was before and uh, then one can assume that total energy is total energy for steady unperturbed isolated system plus additional contribution of energy from the external kicks. And in this situation, the approach that we are learning today becomes the major avenue of theoretical science. So uh, without this thing, it will be just a little exercise that prepares you for future life. Uh, but if we have perturbation, the approach that we, we, are, we are getting now becomes truly the only thing which is possible because uh, it's not practical to recompute eigenstates anytime system is kicked by external perturbation it's much simpler and easier to see how coefficients in front of standard basis functions respond to external perturbations so this is a kind of a little out of box thinking what is the benefits of today uh, today's approach for the uh, world behind the class okay
And this is just a diagram how uh, theory is working. Like there is experiment, there is model, and uh, one uh, tries to get match between uh, predictions from computation and theory and uh, experimental measurements until they, they converge. Okay, what do we remember? about this expansion coefficients. We can write them down as rows or columns. If they're rows and columns, they can be multiplied and row by column uh, should give a number. And if those are not arbitrary uh, row and column functions, but if they correspond to actual uh, model, they should be normalized because some, uh, those pair of coefficients or coefficients absolutely square added together should give one if we are speaking about one one electron right so if we are living in the world of wave functions normalization is wave function uh, conjugated times wave function integrated should give one if you live in the space of expansion coefficients it should be the scalar product should give one but it, uh, the meaning behind these two operations is absolutely the same. Is it okay? Yeah, thank you. So on the previous slide, we were multiplying uh, Brian cat uh, vector to itself. But um, as we already practiced in the Heisenberg uh, equation of motion, one can put an operator between Brian and Cat. Um, I hope this slide will be shown again. This information will be shown on the other slide in the typed, in the carefully typed uh, font. So if you feel irritation to what you see on, on the screen, you can close eyes and wait a little. <laughs> So you all know how to predict future, right? By uh, several ways. And if we are in um, practicing Schrodinger equation, we can say that the future is set of basis functions times initial conditions times uh, time accumulation, which can be interpreted as expansion coefficients uh, accumulate phase, oscillate in the complex plane. So in some sense, this is a trivial result. We know it without today's lecture, right? We knew it uh, almost a, a month ago. And uh, by solving the equation that uh, I'm, we are going to arrive to today, uh, we are not going to get anything other than this result. So in some sense, it will be trivial. So why should we get to this equation and uh, dry our, our brains? Because this result is correct only in the situation when a uh, system is isolated, when there are no external perturbations. So I admit we are going through some uh, studying material which is oversimplified, but as soon as we jump into real life, the equation will remain the same, but solutions will be much more interesting. I cannot promise that we'll have enough time to do this real time things, maybe a little bit in the in the project, but we are setting foundation which will be uh, correct for much more complicated problems. And uh, this uh, little box is a solution of every, uh, for for the questions that we are going to derive. So uh, we are pl I am playing open cards. In some sense, I'm designing the equation that will give this answer. Okay, so I already don't remember who was presenting postulate number five on lecture number seven. Even if the author doesn't uh, remember it, it's fine. But I, I remember it was such presentation and it was about the matrix element, the bridge between uh, knowledge of the future and uh, Expect result of experiment, right? So what if instead of wave function, we plug in this uh, expansion over basis states? 
So uh, wherever we have wave function with star, we will have uh, bra vector. So an angle looking to the to the left times uh, expansion coefficients. Where we have normal wave functions, we will have cat vector where the angle looks to the right and coefficients without star. So coefficient, coefficient, operator. And then we will arrive to, so two times two will be four, four terms, four sandwiches, where each sandwich has product of two coefficients, bra, operator, and cat, like here. First term will be C1 star C1, then uh, bra of the uh, first wave function angle angle to the left, operator angle to the right. So <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure if my memory serves me well. Maybe we already covered it, but it is seems important and I'll repeat it even if I told it before. So the problem of finding expectation value is related to true experiments. Uh, experiments happen in different conditions, with different initial conditions, with different perturbations. But uh, for those who decide to interpret and predict experiments with theory, uh, one looks for one is looking for bypasses, simple ways. For example, using the same basis functions all the time. And here, the result of prediction for experiment will always may always have the same combination of uh, bra of basis operator of our observable cat of, of basis times product of expansion coefficients which may take different values depending on time right and um oh, with support if this makes sense okay and i'm going to quickly jump about 10 slides back and then return here it is very much justified so i'm, I'm jumping to the formulation of the of the homework so here like uh, number two and number three i steps toward the same goal so it is offered to find matrix elements of the uh, observable of position, and then later to plug it in to find actual expectation value, which may depend on time. So these things do not depend on time, but the final answer will, okay? And it is a very, very common situation. Uh, very far behind this uh, little exercise. Okay, I'm returning about 10 slides forward. So, and this uh, combination of basis operator basis is called matrix element. Uh, if there are two basis functions, there are two by two, four matrix elements. If there are five basis functions, there are five by five, 25 matrix elements. So it's number of uh, uh, basis functions squared. Although it, it may look scary, but it's still a very efficient way. And uh, at some point it can be programmed so that not to bother humans with computing this stuff, but uh, doing it in more computerized way. So as, as I promised, same thing in uh, less ugly writing. So by practicing the, the sandwich procedure and plugging in uh, wave function form of expansion coefficients, one is arriving to expectation average, uh, expectation value of, uh, of an observable as in form of uh, summation of terms, each of which is a product of time evolution and matrix element. which can be called uh, just by putting indices on, on the bottom, right? And then index, uh, an object with two indices is typically called matrix. Okay. 
and one can place them in a in a form of a square matrix. And uh, if we live in not in the space of um, discrete vectors, but in the space of continuous wave functions, then um, matrix element with indices M and N will be basis function number M operator basis function number N, right? So in, uh, in the case of the uh, coming homework, if one needs to uh, find matrix element of X for the basis function of the first ground state, it will be sine pi x over L squared times x integrate. If uh, one needs the matrix element x to two, it will be sine two pi x uh, over L squared times x dx. And if it is uh, transitional matrix elements with uh, not non-equal index, it will be sine pi x over L times x times sine uh, two pi x over L. And this was a mathematical exercise that uh, most of you have completed before as uh, extra credit. But now we see a little bit more um, fundamentals and definitions for, for this operation. If you live in the space of, um, if you use definition of matrix element and transfer into the space of uh, discrete coefficients, then expectation value is rho vector, which is equivalent to bra times matrix of matrix elements times ket, which is a, a column vector of the expansion coefficients. And uh, if you practice row by column, it will give the same um, expression as we as we derived before right so matrix operations by row by column uh, algebraic processing of the continuous wave functions and uh, direct notation they all uh, give the same results just uh, um, simpler or some depending on situation one or another can be simpler um if you're already tired and bored, bored, please close eyes for about two minutes. If you're curious, uh, stay awake. <clears throat> and few meetings before we got acquainted with density metrics, right? So product of the expansion coefficients holds information about future of the system instead of wave function and uh, in some problems uh, it can be found useful so here is definition density matrix this indices is a uh, product of these coefficients placed uh, in uh, points where elements of matrix should be and one can call it row one one row one two row two one row two two get times bra and uh, another piece of information if one has a matrix there is a mathematical operation of trace which is uh, adding together the elements on, on, the, on the main diagonal. So uh, one can prove that if one multiplies density matrix by matrix of matrix elements and takes trace out of it, one will get absolutely the same result as in everything we, we looked at before. So instead of wave function and matrix element, one can take density matrix and matrix element. And the way to get it is to, so uh, here is a little proof. If one multiplies this matrix by this matrix uh, in the row by colon procedure and then takes the trace, it will be all four matrix elements, one, 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 two, two, one, two, two, and all uh, density matrix elements, which will be like C1, C2 and, and so forth. And one will get the same same result. Um, for a range of practical problems, uh, this is a very useful tool. Okay, if you are not listening, you can uh, 
open eyes and ears. And now we will continue on the material for, for the course. So, we have about 10 minutes, 11, it's cool. Um, I am going to take another interview and ask for help to set up polls for too many candidates. So, Adam, which assignment would you like to give me? What would be the goal for the first 10 minutes? <laughs> Um, just based on what, what you did before. I, uh, I just stop and go home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, How can we arrive to the question that we watched at the beginning based on everything we did? Um, uh, I, I don't know. Um, we know Schrodinger equation. And we know that the, in the matrix form, uh, we have analog of Schrodinger equation without wave function. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. So uh, would you agree that it would be a nice goal to get rid of wave function? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Thank you for, for the support. <laughs> so, uh, wait. If we follow instructions of Adam and we hate wave function, we want to get rid of it. Uh, do you have any comments? How can we do it? Any, any ideas? Do not, do not. Um, and maybe connection to what you see on the screen. We're going to have to set up some sort of matrix. Yes. Can we? Uh, do, would you agree that if we multiply two wave functions and we integrate, we get rid of it? We convert it into a number. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Nate, can you summarize what, what you've heard? Um, we need to get rid of the wave function part uh -huh. of the short range equation. Is it, are we going to figure out how to get that exponential from earlier? Is there did oh, no, no, we're we not going to get to evolution operator. We are going to set up an equation for expansion coefficients. Instead of instead of wave function, so we will start from Schrodinger equation and uh, arrive to equation for expansion coefficients. Okay. Uh, but uh, we need to get rid of uh, both uh, uh, time-dependent wave function and basis functions. Okay, that's yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So through this discussion, I'm learning something. Uh, Sibel, do you have any comments? or your interpretation of what is going on. So we, we need to get to the equation where we started the lecture and it doesn't have any wave functions. So we, we need and uh, we need to start from the equation that we know from Schrodinger equation and remove any wave functions from, from there. Okay. Uh, Joe, would you summarize or agree or disagree with anything? Yeah, honestly, I think my thoughts on it is uh, basically like we need to set up like some kind of basis and then expand Schrodinger's equation over that basis. Mm -hmm. And then uh, basically try to use or manipulate like the, the expansion coefficients to get rid of the wave equation. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, now we have about six to seven minutes, but if you be an uh, educated uh, uh, travel. So in, instead of just passively listening, we know what, what to do. And this uh, stuff is orthogonality relation, right? When wave functions have the same index, they convert to one, different in index uh, convert to zero. And it will be uh, the main two to get the final equation. So here is the plan. Uh, we do know time-dependent Schrodinger equation. We do know expansion, right? And we are plugging uh, this expansion into here, right? So, and then the next thing, we are going to mult uh, multiply these cat vectors by another bra vector to practice this um, orthogonality. 
and by practicing this orthogonality, all basis functions will be removed. They will uh, basis functions will uh, uh, be either one or zero. So I think there is better rating. Okay. So here at this point, I did plug this big psi into Schrodinger equation, right? So here is the big psi wave function. Here is total energy. Here is again big psi wave function. Now I multiply it by uh, m. Uh, is it is it okay notation, or you you want more more comments of what this m is? Okay, uh, at least one once more comment. So I, I was practicing laziness, and instead of telling phi m or or phi m, I just uh, simplified it as as m. Okay, so I multiplied by uh, bra m for each term. So op uh, open bracket and multiply by this red m here, there, there, and there. So four terms. And uh, multiply, and then uh, since expansion coefficients depend on time, but basis functions do not, so this derivative doesn't affect m, we can swap this derivative and m. So we migrated here. And we already see there are um, orthogonality, a way to practice orthogonality relation, like m times one, m times two, right? So it is what uh, I'm going to show in the next slide. So if m equals one, then m one will be one. If uh, m equals two, then two and one will be zero, right? If uh, m, yeah, okay. Now, uh, the value of index m takes only two values. So our previous equation can be rewritten two times because we currently we consider only the two basis functions. If we have infinite number, it will be infinite number of equations, but we don't have time for it. So for m equals one, the uh, bra times cat here gets one, second one gets zero. For second one, this one gets uh, zero, this one gets one. And we see here that for m equals one, we explore derivative of the first coefficient for the second one we explore derivative of the second coefficient so this um orthogonality relation helps us to parse to focus our attention on on the needed excited uh, needed expansion coefficients make sense okay yeah yeah thank you and then uh, on the right side i just blindly plug in uh, value m so m equals one here m equals one here m equals two there m equals two there right basically we already got what we need right so let's uh, just write it in a better better way so time derivative of c1 equals this summation time derivative of c2 equals this summation and uh do i have any, any more in between no uh so h11 times c1 h12 times c2 so i can flip my mind and accept this notation as a result of multiplication of some matrix by some uh, column vector I don't know how to say it logically, but uh, it looks very much like a matrix by vector. So if one uh, removes this C1 and C2 from here and there and just puts them into C1, C2, then this row by column will exactly reproduce this line and this row by column will reproduce this line. Uh, Agree. So we do have uh, this equation, which is increment time increment of the expansion coefficients over time depends on um, matrix elements of Hamiltonian. If we do not have external perturbation, Hamiltonian is typically diagonal. 
where will be energy of state one and state two. And, and those elements will be zero. Therefore, the solution will just uh, accumulate phase. But as soon as there are transitions between state one and two, for example, light excites, then situation will become much more interesting and much more complicated. Uh, so in absence of light, H11 energy first state, H22 energy second state, of diagonal elements are zeros, and each expansion coefficient just accumulates phase. If we go beyond that, we will go into more advanced theory for uh, photo-induced processes where we will see dynamics, how the system converts from ground to excited continuously, which is a little bit away from main focus of the scores, but we may touch it during the projects. Uh, here is what our goal was. Thank you for your patience and staying here. Uh, everyone is welcome to uh, disconnect and depart. And I'll stay uh, here just in case there are any questions. Uh, sorry that you weekend will have some homeworks, but uh, try to have some rest in uh, as a as a part of your uh, of your weekend. Okay. Oh, camera is here.